Hi there, well it's uh, been a crazy sort of 12 months really since I put my last video. Um, when we were on holiday uh, last summer, um, my 98 year old mother-in-law fell and broke a hip at home. Uh, so we had to cut the holiday short. She had a hip replacement and uh, managed to uh, recoup. And, and during that period we, we made changes to a, a bungalow, put in a wet room and stuff like that. Um, so she could come home. Um, but having got home, eventually, uh, we realised that she wanted uh, more care than that, so uh, we had to find her a care home. So uh, we, we found a nice care home and uh, unfortunately we had to sell a house to be able to fund the care home, so uh, we had to sort of clear it all out and do all those things. And uh, also during that time I got shingles. <laughs> it took me about six months to recover from shingles. So yeah, it's not been a, a, a great 12 months. Now my time is now f sort of quite limited and uh, doing these videos is really, really time consuming. It probably takes me four times longer to machine something if I'm videoing it. Um, and I really need to complete the supposed twin. So my plan is, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you not a lot of machining, uh, very little machining to be honest. But I'll show you sort of like the key points in terms of um, if I've deviated from the drawing and uh, should just show you progress in that way. Um, so fingers crossed it will work out okay uh, but like I say my time is sort of really really limited so we'll just have to see how we get on. Now one thing that's uh, put me off progressing a little bit to be honest on this engine is the fact that the valve seats are cut into the aluminium head. Something I've never done before uh, because uh, all my valve seats are being cut uh, into the um, valve guides or valve enclosures, whatever you want to call them. And uh, that's fairly straightforward to do because you can do that to cut in at that 45 degree angle in the lathe. Obviously, if you're going to cut them uh, into the head, um, it uh, gives you some sort of like challenges and I came across a drawing that George Britnell uh, produced he's quite a renowned uh, model engineer you can find all sorts of posts he's done on the internet and uh, on one of his posts I came across this if you search around you'll find this drawing and uh, he details how to make a valve uh, uh, seat cutting tool and uh, what you do first of all is to get some silver steel and turn the end down so that fits down where the um, valve will go and the valve stem and then you turn a, a bit more down and that's where um, it will insert into the actual uh, port on the head then you cut a, a 45 degree face and then you cut some flutes on it and that's how it turns out so um, I followed these instructions and uh, I came up with this now it's, it's not perfect, um, I didn't harden it because I thought hardening it might increase its size marginally and I didn't want any problems like that. And the fact that this is silver steel and it's cut in aluminium it shouldn't be a problem. I did run into a bit of a pro problem when I was um, cutting some of these flutes where um, I got a bit of a burr on the front cutting edge. Uh, but I managed to resolve that and uh, it seemed to work okay so um, I cut the valve seats and uh, I made some valves now <laughs> the valves I've made in the past have always been um, made of two parts uh, the stem and the actual valve and I've silver soldered them um, I've tried that and uh, I had some failures now I, I don't know whether it's due to the actual size of these valves because they are quite small it's quite difficult to get in to clean them with acetone uh, and, uh, acet acetone and uh, whether or not I didn't clean them right uh, when I silver soldered I don't know but the silver soldering was was failing first first time for me that so I decided I would make them out of a solid piece of silver steel and that was really straightforward um, and uh, the, the, the valves seem to be uh, sealing quite well. I uh, 
uh, did a pressure test on them and uh, they seem pretty good. So now what I need to do is, oh, one other thing I did was when I made these heads, I, there's a requirement to thread this area here and that's going to hold a post for uh, the rockers. Now, the amount of thread available to, th to, to the depth of thread uh, without encroaching on where the, the um, spark plug goes is, is very, very shallow. But I would say virtually impossible to cut a thread. Um, so what I did was I, I drilled right through. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a stud there. Um, I'll use something like JB Weld or something like that to get it in place and sealed and then I can just uh, put a nut on the top of the uh, the post that holds it uh, that, that's held on here uh, so so that's the plan so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some rockers now these rocker arms are quite small and there's a requirement here to turn some radiuses so what I've done is I've made this little thing whatever you might call it um, which has got the correct radius there I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on the rotary table and then use a tool just to turn this radius now there's also a radius down here that needs to be turned so the way I've worked that out to scribe that area is I've just turned that which is at the correct radius Put it on the centre where it's supposed to sit, then just scribe around it. So I know there how to cut that radius. Now it might be that once I've done this work here, I, I just file that. I don't know. We'll have to see how we get on. But I'll, I'll probably do all that off camera. And for those who might be interested in the setup on the rotary table. This area here I'm just going to have a go at plunge cutting. Fingers crossed it'll turn out okay. And to turn this radius, put this screw in here. Screw it right to the end. And then I uh, put it on the mill like this. A lot of work went into these. So to cut the cams, I'm going to uh, put them on a mandrel using super glue, uh, and uh, I'm going to use the same method that I use for the uh, Jerry Howell cams, um, using uh, this rotary table. I just need to check that it's straight. That looks pretty good. Well the cam profile in the drawing um, shows pretty much a straight edge here but no angles. Um, so having looked at the Jerry Howell drawing I've worked out that the angle here if, if we go with 115 or thereabouts it'll create these edges like that and then what I can do is hand file larger radius on here so it's more of a gradual thing as opposed to going straight and then uh, very sharp at the end so uh, that's the plan like I say I'll, I'll follow the exact approach that I did with uh, the Jerry Howell cams when I uh, machine these so uh, I, I won't show you that process I must say I'm pretty happy with those profiles
So now there's a requirement to lock tight these cams onto the camshaft. And I've locked tighted that one and there's a requirement to offset the other one by 102 degrees. So I thought while I got the rotary table on, um, I used a little gear cutter just to make two marks on here which are 102 degrees apart. So what I'm going to do is slip that on there, line one of those grooves, up, one of those marks up with the top edge of the cam and I'll turn it round, I'll mark that up there and then I'll lock tight that one in place. I think there's a gap of about 40 thou or something like that. So that's how I'll do it. Well having made the camshaft and the cam followers I thought it might be an opportunity to uh, start some of the uh, sort of construction, final construction. Um, so what I did was I used some of this gasket sealer to seal all the uh, edges and then bolt it all together again. Uh, but prior to doing that I noticed this gap here. So I thought I'd be clever and make a little washer just to stop this from slipping. And then after, after I got it all bolted together then I thought to myself well, how do you do the timing on the cam, <laughs> on the camshaft? And then I realised that that's why that space is there, because to do the timing on the camshaft, you can do that, you can spin it, disengage it from the uh, crankshaft, and then re-engage it. So, uh, yeah, I could have kicked myself, so I had to take it all apart and uh, redo it all, um, and make sure that I didn't put that on. And then, um, to rub salt in the wound, I came across some uh, instructions, <laughs> construction notes, and that's the problem with picking up a job a year later. I actually forgot that these construction notes existed. So uh, I think it actually, I've just had a quick read, and it does refer to uh, this being used to... Uh, you know, do the timing on the camshaft. So, um, I'll have a bit of a read tonight. Hopefully I haven't goofed up on anything else. So what I've done is made a couple of studs uh, to hold the rocker posts in place. And uh, on this side here, um, there's some the thread of uh, 0.15 of an inch. On the other side, 0.2 of an inch. Now for the 0.15, that's going to go in there, um, just screw in there, and it'll just clear the uh, spark plug thread. And I think what I'll do when I assemble it, I'm going to put a bit of this Loctite 243 thread lock on it. Um, and then, on this post here, when that goes on, I'm going to put a little bit of this... Um, gasket sealer on it, just in case there's any uh, sort of leakage. I don't think there will be. Um, so that's the plan. So I've made the push rods and I had to, uh, as per the instructions, file uh, s s a little groove in the heads just to uh, get some clearance. But what I did find is that the rocker arms um, I had to change these, I had to file some off the bottom because there was so much material there that the rocker arms were like that. Which obviously, you know, uh, doesn't look right. Um, and I couldn't get any clearance. So uh, I filed them off to sort of like roundabout, sort of that size. And uh, it actually sort of matches the drawing in the instructions or the sort of photographing the instructions. Um, so I, I think that'll be okay. Now in terms of timing, again the instructions, what they say is, um, so this is timing for the for the camshaft. Um, you get cylinder one top of centre, which is about there. 
don't know whether you can see that. I mean, I could take the head off, but or something, but I'm not going to bother with that. So it's about there, and the idea is that um, this valve should open at the same distance that this opens in the other direction. So if I move this one there, it's just starting to open. What I did was I put a little mark down here to see where that was and then do the other direction. It's just starting to open there and put another little mark on. So I'm quite satisfied really that the, uh, the camshaft is in the correct position and uh, it'll do the same for the other cylinder if we uh, can, do, can demonstrate that. So there you go. Um, again, sort of top of centre here. And just starting to open there. There. And just starting to open there. There. So I'm pretty happy that that's uh, spot on. Um, so I think all I need to do now is make a flywheel and uh, do the electrics, which will be electronic ignition. Well, that all seemed to work out reasonably well, and uh, I hope to see you in the next video.